UPS is the world's largest parcel delivery company. We have over 90,000 trucks worldwide and an annual fuel bill in excess of $4 billion that fluctuates unpredictably. Domestic natural gas now makes it thinkable for UPS to decouple a substantial portion of its 17,000 heavy trucks from oil. UPS has tested compressed natural gas in our brown package cars since 1989 and liquid natural gas in heavy trucks since 2001. We currently have nearly 3,000 alternative fuel vehicles in service worldwide in our rolling laboratory. This experience has taught us a great, ve a great deal. First, there is no alternative fuel silver bullet. In fact, UPS is fuel neutral. We can use different fuels at different hubs, each centrally fueled in our hub and spoke system. Second, to make alternative fuels affordable, we need multiple options in vehicle and fuels technology. So competition drives down the higher initial cost. So for our brown package cars, we have compressed, and we have this in service, compressed natural gas, diesel, diesel electric hybrid, hydraulic hybrid, hybrid, propane and plug-in electric, all as options to petroleum. Even then, the economics are marginal and usually unfavorable. Our heavy trucks consume far more petroleum and thus offer greater fuel savings to offset the higher initial cost of an LNG tractor, meaning a tractor for a tractor trailer. We now have over 100 LNG heavy trucks in service and have announced plans to buy 700 more by the end of 2014. The problem is, as has been alluded to, they cost a lot more than a conventional diesel truck. In our, ca in our, our case, about twice as much as a diesel truck. We need more technical op technological options, competition in a word, in the heavy truck sector. This leads to a third conclusion. Government has a key role. Government research funding and national lab expertise were certainly vital in George Mitchell's long quest for viable fracking technology. America's vast natural gas resource base would seem to invite more research on the use of natural gas and its derivatives for dual fuel heavy trucks. UPS is already joined with EPA in test of medium trucks using methanol injection, the methanol made from natural gas, with intriguing results. The methanol, uh, as, as I said, is typically made from natural gas, although it can make be made from a variety of other sources as well. We would like to see similar tests on heavy trucks as well and research on other dual fuel trucks using natural gas or derivatives of natural gas to displace diesel. Future changing environmental requirements will impose new technological challenges on UPS vehicles. Scott Davis, our CEO, calls LNG quote, a bridge between traditional fossil fuels and emerging renewable alternative fuels, unquote. Our alternative fuel fleet of nearly 3,000 vehicles was all purchased with the necessary help of federal and state government incentives. We preferred to deploy natural gas powered trucks without incentives. The economics are there for heavy trucks in some locations, but for other types like electric vehicles, we still need assistance although we anticipate that battery costs will continue to decline. They are, and as the, my predecessors have mentioned, several areas where cover, current government policy penalizes us for trying to do the right thing. The 12% federal excise tax on new trucks adds, in our case, for a heavy diesel dual fuel LNG tractor, $12,000 extra taxes compared to a conventional diesel truck. Further, LNG is taxed at 17 cents per gallon more than diesel on an energy equivalent basis. Finally, federal truck weight limits penalize the LNG truck that requires an extra heavy insulated tank. Working with the Natural Gas Vehicles of America, we hope to convince Congress to address these federal disincentives to the use of alternative vehicles. Thank you. Very good. Dr. Clay. 